Greetings all tabbers. Today we will be looking at We will be looking at Alliance of Valiant Arms. Yeah, okay, what the fuck is that? Anyway, whatever. We are reviewing Alliance Valiant. <laughs> That's better. Stupid voice box. And I also get built-in tea making facilities. Freaking awesome or what? Huh, what's this? Review? Hmm. Guess I might as well. Alliance of Valiant Arms is another one of those free Korean lobby-based first-person shooters that is not an MMOFPS. I'll resist here to explain that, because it's an argument for another time. Now, Koreans tend to go through phases. Not too long ago, every Korean games development company felt the need to make an MMORPG, which resulted in more MMOs than I can count, all looking somewhat different but playing largely the same. Now seems to be FPS time. So Alliance of Valiant Arms, or AVA, is just another Korean shooter, much like Combat Arms and Wolf Team, to name a few. But it does have one difference. It's better. Yes, you in the back, the fanboy, I can hear you screaming, fuck you, insert name here, is way better than Ava. And frankly, I don't care. Why, you ask, is Ava better than most of these free shooters? Well, when you buy a gun, it doesn't expire in a day. Some of us have jobs and can't dedicate the time required to earn enough in-game cash to afford buying the same damn gun every day. Instead, guns get damaged as you use them and you're required to repair them after so many games. This does cost a lot of in-game funds, but they degrade only as they are used, so if you play once a week, the gun is going to last you a very long time. To those of you who only play retail first-person shooters and have never really touched a free Korean one, this might not have made any sense. But to put it simply, in order to make the game feel more MMO, they have a shop you can visit between matches to buy guns, and for some reason, the gun goes poof after a day and you have to rebuy it in most of these free games. Probably to encourage people with less time on their hands but more money to pay for the guns with real cash. Anyway, that's out of the way. Let's actually review the game properly now. So, let's start with the setting. To put it simply, Russia woke up on the wrong side of the bed one morning and decided to take over the world starting with Europe. America does not get involved. Hmm. America not wanting to get involved in a war, that's a nice change. Players fight for either Europe or Russia, even though the Europeans sound very American. Not a bad setting for this kind of game. My only complaint is that your characters do not get tied to a side. From a gameplay perspective, this is better as matches balance out easier and you get to play as attackers and defenders more easily. But it makes the game less involving when you're switching uniforms, language and loyalty in about every match. Whereas most Korean first-person shooters are on the Lithtech engine, AVA is on the Unreal 3 engine, and it does show. The graphics are superb, as is the sound quality. The character models are nice. Different armor and facial fur lets you customize your character to some degree, and there's some nice little effects not often seen in these games. For example, when you step outside into the sunlight, your eyes actually need to adjust before you can see in front of you. Gun sounds are also very good, and characters' shouts are very convincing. Russians shout in Russian, and Europeans shout in American. Yeah, it is a bit weird, but not that big a deal. When characters have less health, their shouts get more stressed, and when you die, sounds get all distant and muffled. The game has three classes, Point Man, Rifleman, and Sniper, who are essentially just the short, medium, and long-range classes. You can switch effortlessly between the classes by pressing a function key. Also, one player in each game is chosen to be the leader, and he has the power to point out enemy players, so all teams can see the marked players. This can often make a huge difference between victory and defeat in a match. When a player dies, they sometimes drop dog tags, and collecting three without dying will give you an extra point in a match called a tactic score. It doesn't really matter if they're dropped from an enemy or a teammate. One thing that must be said, the game is US hosted only. European gamers can get a decent game in, the lag won't ruin the experience, but you still have these moments where the kill takes a split second too long to register, and you're the one dead even though you can swear you pulled the trigger aiming at his face with the blood spatter to prove it. Not quite a game killer, but in more intense matches it can be very frustrating. The actual game plays very smoothly and the modes are nice and varied. It's got the typical team deathmatch dubbed Annihilation and that one mode that's in every bloody game since Counter-Strike. You know, the bomb mode where when you die you're out of the round. My favourite mode has to be the Escort mode, which is a variation of Payload, popularised by Team Fortress 2. 
The attacking team has to escort a tank from one section of the map to the next. The tank has a heavy machine gun attached to it that players can mount, and it will only ever move if players are standing next to it. The attacking team obviously has to stop the tank from reaching its gold, and to help them, they do get uh, to pick up RPGs and blow up the tank. If they do break it, the defending team can repair it. The mode is very fun, very hectic, and objective-based. There is also a co-op mode in which four players team up together to fend off insane prisoners. There's two variations of this mode, one being survival, where you just rack up kills and go for the high score, and there's an objective mode in which you have to actually escape. Both versions are great fun and require a lot of coordination. Which brings us to one of the game's flaws. The community. What can I say, really? It's a typical idgy community. You know, waiting for a game to start. Go! Go fag! Go noob! Go 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 go! Kill someone one too many times, you're a hacker. Having said that, I don't actually think I've ever witnessed hackers in the game yet. But yeah, my point is, play Ava when you're in the mood to kill stuff. Just don't go looking for a particularly good social experience, because you will not find it here. The game does have premium items, but for the most part they're the same guns, you just get them at a lower level. There's also some other guns that you can only get premium, but they aren't really that special. I've never ran into someone and thought, this guy's obviously a premium user. Overall, this is a very high quality free first person shooter, and the whole guns don't expire in a day thing makes it playable to people who have a life. However, it is an edgy game, and that does mean it has an edgy community. I highly recommend it, just be warned it has many a 12 year old. Now, what do I do about Sunny? Give me a sec. Hello? Yeah, um, my friend here has been accidentally shot with a Gatling gun multiple times. I need you to come pick him up. Yeah, the address is...